What does it mean to be a self-giving husband? This is a concept that many husbands probably don't put too much thought into, but you really should if you want to show your wife love in a whole new way. Let's unpack this today. Welcome to the Husband's Coach's Corner, the podcast that teaches husbands how to love their wife every day and become better men in the process. I'm your host, Chris Scott, aka The Husband Coach. Welcome back to another episode of The Husband Coach's Corner. We are unpacking four attributes to show your wife love. Those four attributes are being mindful, graceful, approachable, and today we're talking about self-giving. Now, before we dive too deep into the content, I do want to let you know about marriagedrills.com. In the description box below of whatever platform you're listening to this on, you'll find the link. It'll take you to the website. There's a lot of things you can do on that website, which one of them is joining my email list. Or you can suggest a podcast topic. And if you want to support this podcast, then consider buying me a coffee. The link is also in the description. Now, last week we talked about being approachable. This week, we're going to be talking about the attribute of self-giving. Now, the definition of self-giving is the act of giving one's self or one's time to others or a cause. Now, this definition doesn't at first glance sound like it really applies to husbands uh, and maybe even sounds a little ambiguous, if you will. But I'm going to help you see this in three different segments of the definition. The first one is, it is an act. The second one, it is internal and personal. And the third one, it will cost you time. These are three things that we will unpack in today's episode in hopes of growing to become a more self-giving husband. So the first one, it is an act. So first off, talk is cheap. Because actions, we all know they speak louder than words. If you are saying, I love you, but you're not doing anything that shows that you love your wife, you're going to miss the mark. Now, the beauty of self giving is this is one of those attributes where what you believe or what you are saying that you are willing to do, you actually show up and you do. This is not something that you can say, oh, yeah, I love you and I'm a self-giving husband without having any proof that you're a self-giving husband. So this is something that you do. Now, if you're intimidated by the fact that you have to give up some portion of yourself to your wife, I'm not talking about an arm or a leg or a lung, which, you know, if you got to give an organ to your wife, maybe. Uh, that's, you know, something that you guys have to discuss. But what I'm talking about is really time, right? And we're going to get into that, but it's really time. And it's also something that you can develop since it's an, it's an act. This is something that you can develop over time as you practice it more and more and more, right? Uh, I grew up playing basketball and I remember my first couple games, I was not very good at playing the game. And as I practiced, as I paid attention to my coaches, I got better. And the same concept will happen with this particular attribute. The more you practice it, the better you're going to get and the more familiar you're going to get and the more self-aware you will be. Because the second portion of this definition is it is internal and personal. See, you have to want to do this. If your wife is telling you, oh, you have to give me time and you're like, oh, I got to give you time. You're not really in a giving mood, right? This is why it has to be self-giving. You have to do this. This is yourself willing to give whatever it is, and it's going to be time, all right? This is not easy. This is hard because you have to overcome your own selfishness and become self-giving. See, I think everyone can relate to being selfish. Uh, I think we all have a little bit of selfishness inside of us, so... This should not come as a surprise that when you are being self-giving, you're actually 
removing some of that selfishness of of whatever you have and you're giving to your wife what she deserves, which is you. And remember, this is a good thing. We want our wives to want us because as soon as they stop wanting us, then you being self-giving is kind of going to be a mute attribute because she's not going to want to receive whatever it is that you're trying to give her. So you got to be more self-giving and she will want to and, and she wants to want you. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, this is not an easy attribute to learn, uh, and it's going to challenge you every single day uh, and all the way up until you get to a point where you are comfortable with this. Right. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. And even when you're comfortable with it, it's going to be challenge on the days when you have already set up something else and you're like, yeah, I'm about to go do this. And then your wife is like, hey. And then you're like, oh, and that's when it's going to become a real challenge for you. All right. Even if you're already comfortable and that's where you and your wife have to have those conversations, because sometimes maybe you have something set up that you just can't reschedule. So I get it. And I'm not telling you that you just have to sacrifice every single time when your wife says, hey, I need this. Uh, But. That comes down to how well do you communicate um, with what it is that you're trying to do. So it's not like if she's coming to you, she's not coming to you to sabotage whatever it is that you have going on, uh, which, you know, some wives may be that way. I'm not going to say that every wife is loving and caring because we know that uh, if it's true that husbands aren't all loving and caring, And it's probably true that wives aren't all loving and caring and willing to uh, allow you to do the things that you're trying to accomplish. Some wives are challenging in that way, uh, but we can still love them through all of those differences and challenges. And this is one of those ways that you can do that and overcome the issues that you have uh, in your marriage when it comes to that. Now. The cost of time is the last thing inside of this particular definition that we're going to unpack. And uh, time is one of the most valuable resources we all have available to us. And, you know, depending on where you come from or what you believe, uh, time could be this man-made construct. Moral of the story is we always have something that we need to do or that we want to do. And it takes time to do it. That's the currency. No matter what it is, it all everything that we do that we ever want to do takes time. All right. And that's just where we're going to leave that. Now, when it comes to building a relationship with your wife, guess what? It takes time. And it takes a heavy investment of your time to build that relationship. And even to sustain that relationship. It's not going to just run on autopilot. If you think that your marriage is going to run on autopilot, I'm sorry. That's just not how marriage works. All right. You're going to have to deal with uh, giving up some time so you can build your relationship. Now, I've mentioned these these notes on this before. Uh, But I'm going to put them here just in case this is a first time listener. The first thing you have to do when it comes to uh, time is set it aside on your calendar every single day, every single day. Now, I won't tell you how much time to set aside because your calendar and your your routine, that is your business, right? But it should be synchronized well with your wife and she should know when the time is that you are, uh, you know, establishing that is dedicated to her. If you are self-employed, then you know this is definitely going to be important for you. If you work uh, a nine to five, this is going to be important for you. Now, whatever you need to do is, so the second thing is you have to prioritize the time that you set aside for your wife. If you're not prioritizing it, then it's just going to be a wasted effort. Because every time you say, hey, this is your time on the calendar, but you 
don't show up or you let someone else bump it or something else bump it. And it's not a mutual agreement that it should be bumped or a genuine emergency. And you know a genuine emergency, right? Uh, then you are going to lose credibility with even setting up this. And you are not going to become the self-giving husband that shows your wife love in, in this capacity. So you have to prioritize the time. And then the third thing is work faster or more efficient on the other things around that time. Now, this really goes to my self-employed individuals or people who uh, they have extracurricular activities outside of their nine to five. Right. Because if you're if you're on hourly wages, then, you know, you got a clock in time and a clock out time. That's just the way it goes. However, if you are self-employed, then hours are a little bit different and you got to be a little bit more flexible with the way that you run your hours. However, if you know that eight o'clock is your time to spend with your wife, then you need to work more efficient on all the things that are leading up to eight o'clock and you need to work faster on those things. Now, I get it. Some things, they just take time because that's, again, the currency that we pay whenever we want to do something. But maybe you have to accomplish this in stages, whatever, you know, I'll, again, that comes down to the efficiency piece. Uh, that is something you'll have to unpack for yourself. But the moral of the story is, I get a lot of guys who tell me, oh, well, I'm self-employed. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. And I just don't get to make it back in time for my wife. And that goes back to the number two thing of prioritizing the time. Look, you can't show your wife genuine love if you're telling her that she comes after everything else that you've been trying to accomplish. Uh, that is not going to go over well with her. Now, she may understand, but the damage is already done. So moral of the story, you got to work harder, you got to work faster, and you got to work more efficient on the things that you are trying to get accomplished. Being a self-giving husband is one of the single hardest ways of showing love to your wife. I'm challenged with this every single day personally, so I get it, guys. I'm not trying to be uh, some white knight that shows up and says, look at me, I'm perfect. I No, I'm a real husband. I'm a real man. And I have my challenges with loving my wife as well. Uh, however, I've made a, a resolve or a decision to be committed to showing my wife love every single day. And I try as much as I possibly can to reflect these four attributes that we're unpacking in these uh, next couple episodes. But self-giving is probably one of the most challenging ones for me because uh, the reason this content is coming out later than I would prefer it to is because I had to prioritize the time with my wife and I did not work more efficient or faster on getting these pre-recorded so that way they can launch when they need to. So you guys are experiencing firsthand uh, that I'm putting my mouth where, or I'm, I'm, I'm putting my actions where my mouth is. So, you know, I'm not some guy who just gets on here and says, Hey, this is the answer. Uh, but I don't do it. Like I, I do this and I don't, or I do struggle with this. So moral of the story, hopefully that is encouraging to you that you don't have to be perfect. I would say that my wife and I have a fantastic relationship and I think she would say the same thing. Uh, maybe I'll bring on an episode later on so, you know, she can just unpack all the things that I, I or that she witnesses that I do for her. Um, and, you know, you guys can hear what she has to say. I'm not going to persuade her to say anything or or whatever. I'm just going to let her share from her heart, uh, which I think you guys would see that. By putting in the effort you will be able to build your relationship in a meaningful way. But if you don't put in the effort, then your relationship isn't going to grow. 
And that's what I want you guys to learn that you put in the effort and it's got to be good effort. Don't put subpar or little baby effort. All right. If that, if all you got at the, like at the moment and you're just now starting and all you got is little baby effort, fine, go ahead, put that in. That's better than nothing. But as you develop your husband skills through practicing the drills that I offer here, or just taking some of the advice and applying it to your marriage, you should grow and become a more mature husband, which then requires more effort. It's like going to the gym and you lift heavy weights. As you start to develop your strength, you need to lift heavier weights. All right. So that's all I'm saying. The same concept happens here in our marriage, and that's just the way it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I will tell you, over time, as the things you are giving up, which is your time, you'll realize the things that you're losing or perceivably losing are insignificant to the things that you will gain in your relationship with your wife and the credibility that you're going to gain with your wife. And, and the way that you're showing her love will be reciprocated in such an amazing way. So, so that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, check out marriagedrills.com. The link is in the description box below. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.